Hello, I'm Dr. Benita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So this whole channel is dedicated to skin of color. The reason being that our melanocytes are larger and they are easier to trigger. This means one scratch, one bite or one burn and we hyperpigment. Unfortunately, the vast majority of skincare on the market was made for Caucasian skin. And so for skin of color, because we can't tolerate any form of inflammation, a lot of these products aren't ideal for us. And that's really what this whole channel is about, is about education and empowerment for our skin of color family so that we know what to purchase and what to avoid. As you know, none of my videos have ever been sponsored and they will never be sponsored. This is my love letter to my skin of color community. And it is to make sure that it's a place that all of us and our children can come to as a reference library to see what is good for our skin and what we should not be spending our hard-earned money on. Right, so today's video is about how to combine actives for your specific skin type. So today I've actually just filmed another video on how to assess your skin type, so you can go over and watch that video too. But this video is because I know it can be really complicated with all the products that are on the market. And if you don't know where to begin with, you know, vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, you know, and peptides and ceramides and all the different categories of ingredients, it can really be overwhelming. And what ends up happening is that we just fall for marketing. So for example, you can pick up a cream and it says anti-aging on it, and you assume it has anti-aging ingredients in it. Unfortunately, you turn over and you look at the back of the ingredients list and you realize it doesn't have a single anti-aging ingredient in it. You can only do that if you have the knowledge of being able to read the ingredients list. That ingredients list, so for example, here's Zincable. This is our 100% mineral sunscreen for skin of color with no white cast SPF 50 and maximum UVA protection. If you look at the box, the back and you turn, you can have a look at all the ingredients. This ingredients list is called the Inky List, I-N-C-I. And anyone that's watched more than 10 of my YouTube videos would be a Dr. V Inky hacker because they'll be able to read more than 50% of the back of the packaging of the ingredients. Uh, they're gonna know whether or not product is worth, that, worth their money or not. Uh, they're gonna know whether it's just a marketing gimmick. And they tend to educate their loved ones actually about the best skincare available. Right, so that was a bit of a long introduction. Uh, so <laughs> let's dive right into the, to the active combinations. Right, so first of all, let's start talking about oily skin because oily skin can happen from 10 years old onwards. It tends to get worse during puberty and it can lead to acne. And for a skin of color, this means that our children who are going through that will then may potentially get pigmentation, PIH and PIE red marks too. So brown marks and red marks. So actually for us, we have to make sure that we control our kids' skin at, at a much younger age because I'm not even so worried about the acne. The acne is temporary. It's the marks that it leaves behind that can lead to psychological damage later and can really knock your confidence. So let's start off with um, oily acne prone skin. So the first ingredient I want you to use is salicylic acid. This can be either in a wash uh, or it can be as a leave-on exfoliator or leave-on toner. I like at less than 2% um, because at less than 2% it is an anti-inflammatory. The way salicylic acid works is it's fat soluble, it gets absorbed into the pore, it unclogs that pore, exfoliates that pore, prevents it from becoming clogged. Once that pore becomes clogged, it is a breeding ground for P. acnes, the bacteria P. acnes, which then leads to get really good at your salicylic acid washes. And even when you're, you haven't got acne, say you're just in the oily skin part of phase of the cycle, you still need to be good with your salicylic acid. Don't just stop and wait for the spot to happen just eat as prevention as well, not just cure. The next ingredient is niacinamide. Niacinamide is great because for two reasons. One, it helps control sebum production, which is what we want. But number two, it also helps with pigmentation. So remember I said before that when we get a mark, it leads to pigmentation. For our children and anyone that's watching that's in their teens, you want to be on top of that pigmentation. And niacinamide is one of the ingredients I would recommend for that. And you're looking at about two to 5%. 
the next one I would say is vitamin A. Vitamin A, I would start from when you actually start getting acne. I wouldn't recommend this until you're actually a teenager. So in the preteen phase, if you're getting oily skin, I wouldn't put your vitamin A at that point. It's a little bit too young. I would wait until you are actually getting spots before I would recommend that. And when it comes to vitamin A, always start with the vitamin Vitamin A is a family of ingredients. Start with the ones that are least irritating, so retinol palmitate, and then you work your way up to retinol or retinaldehyde, um, all the way up to, if you have cystic acne and you see a dermatologist, they may put you on Roaccutane. So that is an extreme version of vitamin A that has to be monitored by a doctor. I wouldn't even start uh, vitamin A until you actually start getting breakouts. I love clay moss because once a week because that does help to mop up any excess oil. Um, do moisturize. So I like, for example, NMF from uh, The Ordinary. So that's their natural moisturizing factor. The reason is people think that if I've got oily skin, I don't need to moisturize because my skin's oily. But what happens is a negative feedback loop. Your skin is producing more oil because it's not moisturized. And I want to break that loop. I want your skin to feel hydrated so it produces less oil. The next skin type is for dry skin. So with dry skin, 30 minutes after you've washed your face, your skin feels tight if you've not worn any moisturizer. That's how you can tell if you have dry skin. Dry skin often looks more dull and it tends to be more sensitive to actives. It actually compromises the skin barrier and we want to strengthen that skin barrier. So key ingredients I love are humectants. Humectants are things like urea and glycerin. They are water magnets. They hold water in that top layer of skin. I'd also recommend you use occlusives. So something such as petroleum, petrolatum, paraffin. These things are all great for creating a film on the top layer of skin, trapping water in the top layer of skin, almost behaving like a second skin layer uh, to prevent transepidermal water loss, so less evaporation of water from the top layer of skin. I'd also add in a barrier oil on top if you have very dry skin at night time. So ones I love are saline, uh, hemp seed oil or jojoba oil. Those three are brilliant because they're unlikely to even lead to spots. Sometimes you get dry skin and spots, which is just a whole other can of worms, but those three oils are also non-comedogenic. Now, if you have hyperpigmentation, which is a lot of us, you want to be using tyrosinase inhibitors. Starting off with niacinamide is the easiest to get hold of. It's a cheap ingredient. You want to use it at two to five percent. It's actually, it's not, that's not a tyrosinase inhibitor. It actually prevents pigment, parcels of pigment from going from the melanocyte, the cell that produces the pigment melanin, to the surrounding skin cells. So it prevents that transfer. So that's that part of the pathway. The tyrosinase inhibitors will work in the actual melanocyte itself to prevent melanin from overproducing. So some of the ones I've written down here are retinoids, so that's a whole vitamin A family. Alpha arbutin is very easy to get hold of. You can get it from the ordinary or from B minimalist. Many people, even skin uh, functionals, do it from South Africa. But 2% alpha arbutin has actually now become very easy to get hold of. Kojic dipalmitate I love. Vitamin C such as sodium ascorbyl phosphate and tetrahexyl decal ascorbate. You know that's my favorite vitamin C because it's fat soluble. Then also vitamin E, green tea extract is also an antioxidant as well as a tyrosinase inhibitor and it's soothing on the skin so it's perfect for skin of color. Licorice extract again a very effective tyrosinase inhibitor and doesn't irritate the skin so it's key for skin of color. For hyperpigmentation you also want to moisturize the skin because what happens is when skin is dry it compacts and all the melanins in those dead skin cells are stuck together the skin can look darker and duller so you actually want water molecules separating these the skin so that the pigmentation appears not as dark. So um, we're looking at hyaluronic acid or glycerin is the other big one. You would also want to use an occlusive such as petrolatum as well um, because it does trap water in the skin which is doing the same thing as discussed before with the moisturizer. We want to to have water molecules in between the skin cells. And also don't forget your SPF 50, preferably zinc oxide if you have hyperpigmentation and especially if you have hyperpigmentation caused by inflammation. So something like from eczema, from um, psoriasis, from uh, melasma, anything that's causing inflammation that then causes pigmentation, you want to use zinc oxide 
SPF 50 because it's anti-inflammatory. So in zinc oil, for example, zinc oxide 17% is anti-inflammatory, anti-pigmentation. The other reason I love Zincable for SPF 50 for pigmentation is because it contains Melashield, which is a UV stable tyrosinase inhibitor. So that means that during the day it's calming down the melanocyte, even though UV is hitting the skin, which a lot of the tyrosinase inhibitors we don't recommend you wear during the day. A lot of them we save for nighttime. Okay, so if you have dull skin, what do you do? You would exfoliate with gentle exfoliators, things like mandelic acid or PHA, which is gluconolactone, because dull skin tends to be more sensitive and dry. Again, moisturize with glycerin, urea, or sodium hyaluronate. Moisturize with, so you want to also use an occlusive on top. Again, go with petrolatum, shea butter, paraffin. These are all great for creating that second layer of skin, which I highly recommend with dull skin because it's likely to be very dry. Brightening tyrosinase inhibitors that I love, that'd be great for dull skin, but also doesn't irritate the skin, would be something like vitamin C. So again, your sodium ascorbate phosphate or tetrahexyl ascorbate. I also love alpha arbutin. I love potassium azelal diglycinate. So it's basically a derivative of azelaic acid, but is soothing and hydrating to the skin. So it's great for dull, dry skin of color. And the last one, of course, niacinamide is a no-brainer. We should basically all be wearing niacinamide. Moving on to anti-aging ingredients. Now, as we age, a few things are happening to the skin. One, our skin is taking much longer to turn over. So for example, my son, who's four years old, has about four days for his skin cells to turn over. Me at 37, it takes about 40 days <laughs> for my skin cells to turn over. And that's why he is gorgeous and delicious and my skin is aging. <laughs> that's the difference. So there's a few things we have to do with that. Number one, our skin is also becoming drier as we age. So we want to get very good at using humectants and emollients and occlusives. So we want a thicker moisturizer. We want to use ingredients that get into the dermis to stimulate collagen. So we do want to use vitamin A, we do want to use peptides. My favorite combination would be something like retinaldehyde, peptides, and tetrahexyl decalascorbate. Those are all ingredients that, you know, I make my own skincare for my own face and I use all those ingredients because they're the few that actually get into the dermis to stimulate collagen. So even for myself, I created a trademark complex called Derm Stim, which penetrates into my dermis. It's stem cells and ferment. And it's basically stimulates collagen and reduces pigmentation because for me, that those are my two key issues. So I literally made Derm Stim just for my own face and I put it in my entire skincare range that I wear, my whole six step routine. <laughs> On that note, if you want me to release my anti-aging, anti-pigmentation skincare line, so it's a budget line that I make just for my own face, I don't uh, make it for anybody else. Um, if that's something you want me to do, can you just write that down below for me? Because I just need to know numbers. Is this something that's really in demand? I've seen a few people say, oh, Dr. Fubu, we really want your CeraPep, which is the moisturizer I make for myself. But if this is something a lot of you want, then I will go through all the assessments, you know, and there's certain things that I have to do in order to make that happen for you. But I need to know if this is something you really want because I've never made face washes for you. I've never made exfoliators for you. I've never made, um, you know, moisturizers for you. I've always made kits. Everything I've ever done has been, you know, high strength tyrosinase inhibiting kits with eight to 10 tyrosinase inhibitors. I haven't done like a daily range for you. So if this is something that you actually want, can you write it down below for me so that... I have the confidence to know that this is something you want and I'm actually serving you. Uh, as we age, we definitely need more antioxidants. We lose antioxidants as we age. So things like vitamin C, resveratrol, ferulic acid, um, green tea extract, these are all great antioxidants for skin of color because they don't irritate, but they mop up free radicals. And don't forget, free radicals leads to premature aging, the exact opposite of what any of us want. Now, if you have acne prone skin, I want you to look at antibacterials such as benzoyl peroxide. 2.5% is perfect for skin of color. Any more than that, it can be too harsh, too irritating, too drying. And then you end up with a situation where you now have dry skin and acne, which is 
like it's very difficult to handle. You want to unclog the pores with salicylic acid. You want to brighten the skin with niacinamide and also it helps to control sebum production. You may also want to add azelaic acid or licorice root if pigmentation from acne is one of your issues. Clay masks are also excellent for mopping up any excess oil. You want a light non-comedogenic moisturizer too. I do prefer gel moisturizers um, because they don't contain fatty alcohols which sometimes can clog pores so I do tend to recommend that in fact for my young cousins who are prone to acne I created a full acne line for them <laughs> like literally their own acne wash the antimicrobial treatments the exfoliators and the non-comedogenic moisturizers am and pm the reason I made it for them was because there was actually no complete set for acne, for skin of colour, that treated acne, the red marks, PIE, and the brown marks, PIH. And so I decided to make it for them in order to help with that situation. So in this acne line, I created a another trademark complex, which I called Acne Calm. And Acne Calm is a stem cell hydroxydecanoic complex, which was antimicrobial and anti-pigmentation. Actually for us, that's our biggest issue. So again, with the acne line, I wasn't planning on making this public, but if it is something that you want, can you write it down below for me too? So just tell me, do you want the anti-aging line or, or do you want the, uh, the acne line? And if there are enough of you that want it, then I will make it happen for you. Don't forget, I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. Don't forget to download your free guide for skin of color down below. Follow me on Instagram, Dr. Mita Rattan or Skincare by Dr. V. Follow me on TikTok, Dr. Mita Rattan. And I've now created a private Facebook group called Dr. V Inky Hackers. Um, there, there are a number of questions you need to answer in order to be let into the group. It's a private group, but just for our inner circle. It's a safe space where you can talk about your skincare issues, you can upload photos, you can ask the our community um, because you know now we've had millions of views of this channel. A lot of us can help each other and a lot of us have had similar issues. So I just want it to be a place where we can just openly talk about our skincare problems, what's worked for us, what hasn't worked. And I'm also gonna be there too to be able to answer your questions. So if that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.